Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Elle and I am a DIY interior blogger and today I'm going to take you on a really special project that I am so excited to begin and that is DIYing this bureau upcycling bleach wood project. So I picked this bureau up in the summer of this year. I was just browsing Facebook Marketplace, I saw it and I knew I needed that in my home. I wasn't exactly sure where it was going to go, what I was going to do with it, but I was just like, it's too much of a bargain to pass upon. So I hold it back in my car. It was quite a journey. It was a very hot day, but it was 100% worth it. And for the last kind of couple of months, it's just been sat in my home waiting to be worked on. I've obviously been getting on with other room projects, a lot of different things behind the scenes that I've been getting on with. And it's just been one of those projects I pushed to one side. It's just been a bit of cumbersome and just getting in the way. So I finally decided that this was the time to tackle it and get it sorted. I also knew I needed to start this quite quickly because of the autumn weather coming in. In the UK, it's always quite miserable, particularly up north, it's quite rainy. So I knew I only had a couple of days left of the summer whereby I could do the sanding that I knew I needed to do for this project before I wouldn't be able to do so and make a complete mess in my own home. So it was like timing perfectly to get this project done. So as I kind of hinted, I am planning to sand down this bureau. As much as I love the shape of it, I hate the colour of the varnish. It is completely too dark, too contrasting for my home. So I knew I wanted to sand it down and I'd seen a lot of inspirational images of this kind of like light wood, bleach wood effect. I'll insert some pictures here, just ones I've been looking at on my mood boards and everything like that. And I knew I wanted to give this bleach wood technique a go, but I wasn't exactly sure how it was going to work out. There's so many different different hints and tips on how to do it. Some of them just wouldn't work, like leaving out in the sun because there was no sun. So I was interested to find a technique that would work and see where we'd go with it. I also knew that I wanted to change this um, function of it. And though I have been using it as a desk while I've been waiting to work on the project, I also knew I wanted to turn this into a bar cart because I am planning to get rid of the pantry that most of my alcohol currently lives in to make way for a dining table in there very much in the future. But I knew I needed a piece to kind of host all that stuff without it being in the way, without it being too difficult to get to, you know, if we're entertaining. And I thought this was a kind of cool, unique way to do it. So I have an idea of the process in my head, but really I'm winging this project. Uh, a lot of this stuff I haven't actually done before. Like I've done a bit of sand Sanding, but I've never done sanding to this extreme. I've never bleached wood, I've never stained wood, never done anything really like that. So this is a brand new thing for me. So I'm really, really just winging it. And I wanna show you everything. I wanna show you the good, the bad, the ugly. I just wanna show you the whole process so you can see it in real time and just how I tackle things where I'm not quite sure. It's the, very much going with the flow. I didn't wanna kinda of just show this beautiful finish produce without showing you sort of the behind the scenes of it. So without waffling on anymore, let's tackle the first thing that we have to do, which is sand this bureau. Okay, it's mid afternoon. I've collected pretty much everything that I need or think I need for this project. As you can hear, the kids are out playing. Time this bit of the clip incredibly well. Um, but yeah, I am gonna start stripping her now of all the varnish. It shouldn't take too long, it just depends how dark it is and you know how long it takes. I have my here, trusty trusty little, God I've forgotten the name of it. Um, Sander, my God, okay. I'm just gonna drink more of this pumpkin spice. Hopefully the coffee will wake me up. I have my trusty Sander, so I'm gonna give it a whirl now. I do have a smaller tool that I can use on more detailed bits of it. There's quite a few, it's not, or flat this unit, but we shall see how we get on. And yeah, I'm excited to see what progress we make. <laughs> Let me sip and let's get sanding. Sip and sand. <laughs>
about four hours now and I've completed all the sanding. It's very addictive once you get on it. I was gonna use this tool to get in the edges and that lasted about two seconds and I was like, nope. So I used the power sander to absolutely do every little nook and cranny of it. A couple of things to note when sanding. So number one, don't wear white. I am completely covered, my shoes are no longer white. Thank God they're machine washable, so I will put them in straight away. Number two, don't bother with your face because I came in, looked at myself in the mirror after wearing my mask and I had like clumps of brown, like all here and everywhere where the sawdust had just landed on my face. So yeah, that, yeah, that's something to know. And number three is to just take it little and often and keep wiping away because I was thinking I had already like sanded some bits. It turned out it was just like loads of sawdust. So little and often keep wiping away and everything like that. So next thing to do is to bleach the wood. This is a chemical process which basically lightens the wood and lifts away all that orange and stuff as much as possible because it's still kind of in the wood still. So this is the mixture I've made up. It's equal parts bleach and water, so 50-50. And essentially what you do is you use a cloth, spray it on, white, 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 and that should obviously lift it over time. Now I've seen people do this where they leave it out in the sun and it lifts quite quickly. The forecast in the next seven days is rain so it's probably going to be a process of just doing it as and when if that makes sense so maybe a little and often so when I bring it in and I'll cover the floor in the kitchen that's probably the best place it's going to be to do this. What I'm probably going to do is just keep applying it like overnight and throughout the day tomorrow until I've achieved the colour that I want. At the moment the colour is actually quite nice but it is just lifting a little bit more of that orange so we'll take it slowly, we'll let it dry and then kind of go from there as and when. So yeah. I kind of feel like I have to say this even though I think it's common sense. Please always wear gloves when you're doing this. You do not want to have a reaction even if it's diluted. You want to protect your skin so yeah we'll go for it. So let's Let's crack on and see where we get up to. We are in much more sensible colour choices for doing DIY and my hair is being pulled up very tight so I'm sorry if I look a little bit eggheady because I'm in between washes. <laughs> so the wood is completely dry, I am obsessed with this colour. It is a little multi-tonal, if I open this up you can see about three shades going on in here. There's also this which is like the original bit of the bureau which I suppose would hold letters and stuff like that in it that I don't necessarily want to get rid of. I think it's part of it, but I, I'm not sure what to do with it because it's not like I can strip this. It would be so fiddly. So I'm contemplating what I'm going to do. Like maybe I paint it, maybe I just leave it as it is. My husband said just to leave it as it is because I'm not going to be opening this up all the time when I turn this into a bar cart. So. So yeah, the next thing to do to kind of finish this off is to basically oil it, but let me take you down and I will show you the next bit of the DIY that we need to work on before we get to that bit. Okay, we're working with a very tight crop here because my kitchen's tiny and I'm not moving this until it's complete. So, as you can see here, I've removed the hardware, obviously I had to in order to sand it down and bleach it, and in removing it I discovered that there was actually different hardware here before, so these is obviously the original holes that belong to the bureau before, I'm assuming before it got revarnished and just kind of upgraded. So I've purchased some um, cast iron knobs. I think it just will look a bit more designer, like the inspiration on Pinterest I've seen for these like natural wood furniture pieces. So I need to fill the holes before I can stain it. Now this is not 
as complicated, but I have never done this before, so I think I'm kind of overthinking it in my head because normally when you fill and you paint over it, it's kind of none the wiser, like, because it's all the same colour, but I'm keeping this this natural colour. And the oil that I'm using isn't actually a stain, it's like a, just an oil, just much like you would do with, like, cuticle oil, just kind of keeps it nice and soft and protected. So, I need to blend it in before I get to that point. So, we're off to my local b &Q. we are going to see what we can do for wood filler. I'm hoping the knobs come soon, they're really nice, like, kind of little teeny ones that I think will look gorgeous on here. In terms of the DIY project, it's not actually taken that long because it's kind of, if I had already had the knobs, it would have been done within like 48 hours. But shipping. Um, but yeah, hopefully done by the weekend so I can start decorating for autumn, but who knows. Anyway, let's head off to our local DIY store, go and pick up the bits. I also have a few errands to run about, so this is really just gonna be a bit of an errand day. Um, but yeah. I'm excited to kind of move forward and also just obsessed with the colour. I, I just, I love it. I love it so much. Holds are filled, sipping on coffee. It's another pumpkin spice latte. Cause you know, there's only a certain number of days in September, October when I can drink these things. I've just done a test patch of this, which is finishing oil. Um, like I was saying, it's like conditioning for the wood and everything like that. I didn't necessarily want to get a varnish or a paint on it because I didn't want to distract from the natural wood color that you know, painstakingly sanded down to get. So I figured this would be the best because it would condition and finish it off and protect the wood without messing with the color. But as you can see, I've applied a little bit here just to see how it does. And, and now I'm regretting that I might have effed it up a little bit. Like, I really hope this is just application and that it's going to dry natural. And I really hope it's not this dark, because if it is, I'm just gonna be like... So fingers crossed, fingers crossed for me, guys. So I've got two hours before I can sand and paint everything um, on the front of everything. So I'm gonna crack on with some other work and I will come back to you when I'm ready to do the rest of it slash so see what this is like, go from there. <laughs> The top is a lot lighter than it is here and I don't know whether that's because of the bleep mixture or if it's two different woods. Either way, I'm not happy with the front but I like the top. I'm hoping this is just me over worrying and once I let it completely dry everything will be fine. If not, we might have to go back to the drawing board, think of like re-bleaching it again, stripping it again. I hope I don't have to strip it again. We'll see, we'll see. I'm just I'm thinking of worst case scenario here and I think I just need to leave it to dry and see where it is the next day. But yeah. <sighs>
Okay guys, it's been a couple of days since I last left you with this makeover. I have been slowly bleaching and re this back a little bit. After I put on the oil stain, it went really, really dark and I regret going for it because it was clear that the tester was not gonna work and I just thought, no, it'd be fine. And then I was like, just create some extra work for yourself. But you learn, these things happen, so it's not, it wasn't too bad, like it just took a day to kind of bleach it back and sand it and it is at a really nice colour now. We're very much at the end of this project, we're pretty much all I have to do is give it a good clean, hoover out the rest of the sawdust and attach on the knobs and do a little bit of a touch up paint job. So let me show you the knobs that I've got for this. These literally arrived the other day and I'm obsessed with them. I wanted that kind of like, I don't know if you can see it. <laughs> Let me just, here we go, can we see? I'll give you a proper close up, but I really wanted like a teeny knob. I wanted to go black hardware because I wanted to match the black accents in the room that I already have with the built-ins and future kind of accents that we're gonna be doing when we make over the living room in the new year. So that was important to me to kind of get that kind of look. I also thought if I went with brass, it'd be too matchy-matchy with the rest of the cabinets in here. And I think because of how light it is, it would have just kind of blended in. So I wanted a little contrast. So we've got these to add on, which will take me no time at all. The other thing we need to do is just fill in and touch up where I've put the filler in. So where I filled in the previous holes to the hardware, Obviously I went for natural wood colour, which is just a bit too light. Even when it was at its lightest, it was still too light for it. So I've been struggling back and forth for what I can do. And then I thought, actually what I can do is if I just top it up with a little bit of black paint, it will blend in and look like one of the knots in there. So it won't be too obvious. And then once we've done those bits, the thing I need to do is just sort out the inside of this bureau. So let me take the camera down and I'll just show you what's going on here. <laughs> okay, I hope you can see me. I'm just like off camera shot. So this is the inside of the bureau. So this is the traditional bit where you would write on and everything like that. And then there's this insert here, which I assume would be where letters would go, stationary, etc., etc. Now this does come out, but it kind of needs to stay in because if I move it out of the way, you can see there's a gap here. So I do want to keep this piece, but obviously at the moment nothing can slot in here because they're just a bit too small. So I was wondering how I could do it. I thought maybe I could recreate this, but I've noticed that in its old wariness, it's kind of coming apart a little bit and it's actually almost nailed on these individual bits. So my thinking is, I'm gonna keep this middle bit because I think this is cool for other stuff, but I'm gonna remove these kind of side bits so that I can fit multiple stuff in here towards the back because obviously with the way it slopes, there's only a certain place you can put tall bottles before they're gonna get knocked over. So this is the other little bit of DIY they need to do whilst the other little bits are drying off. So it seems like a lot of work, but it actually isn't. So I'm just gonna tackle these projects and I'm pretty sure I'll be able to kind of do reveals to you tomorrow. Although for you, that would be like five minutes, but you know what I mean. So let's cue some time lapses of me doing some DIY. <laughs>
actually took me no time at all to do the inside and I completed it within a day. I am so happy with how this turned out. As I was putting in all the alcohol and everything like that, I just saw the vision that I had come to life and I'm obsessed. I'm so happy that I've managed to achieve this. Obviously, I need to play around with the design a little bit more on top and everything like that. I know there's a couple of pieces that I want to get. This in particular is going to become a DIY, which I've talked about over on my Instagram story. So hopefully we'll be seeing that very, very soon and that will help complete the look of it. So I do hope I've inspired you to give your own DIY upcycling furniture projects a go. This is really beginner DIY. So anybody can do this. I do hope you enjoyed watching this video. Do let me know in the comments below and if which projects you're going to be taking on next, which projects you'd like to see me take on next. I have lots of room makeovers coming up. I do have a secret project coming up which I can't wait to take you on that journey. It is completely out of my comfort zone. It's nothing to do with residential interiors, hint hint. Yeah, I am so excited to kind of take you on this journey. So do subscribe to my channel if you're not already so you don't miss out on all that fun. Share this video with someone who is interested in upcycling their own furniture and needs a little bit of help. Hopefully this will inspire them to go ahead and tackle that project. And yeah, I hope to see you guys very, very soon. Bye.